Um, I just like to, you know, close by uh, p making a pitch for somebody else's book. When I uh, had uh, the opportunity last month to, to do a long uh, interview with Brother Wilhelm for uh, my next book project over at the Cafe Romeo um, uh, last month, he told me about a, a very interesting new book that's coming out. Uh, this spring is called Restructuring the Power of Unions. It takes a movement. It's by a fellow named Jack Getman, who was a law school professor here at Yale in the 60s and the 70s, uh, a guy who uh, was a longtime ally of Local 34 and 35 during their organizing and strikes. And this book is a very, very interesting examination of these questions. Uh, terrific history of the, the Yale union building process, a great portrait of Vince Cerebella, uh, a leading figure in the union movement in New Haven back in the 60s and 70s, uh, a mentor for John and many other people in HERE. Uh, it's a great book that describes the rise and fall of the Unite Here merger, some of the developments recently in Change to Win, and uh, you know I'd highly recommend it. Uh, uh, in addition to the book that's on sale tonight, uh, because it has a very big and very interesting dose of, of local labor history. And yeah, I mean, I think if you, if you looked at the, the heart poll that the AFL-CIO did after the debacle of a month ago in Massachusetts, uh, a real major driver in that vote outcome was the economic distress of working class people in Massachusetts and the feeling that the Democrats locally and nationally are not in touch with that. Um, you know, if you thought the economy was still doing poorly, uh, you were a uh, Brown voter. If you thought it was doing better lately, you were a Coakley voter. Uh, in the 20 percent of households who'd lost a job holder in Massachusetts in the last year, uh, the vote went to Brown 50 to 45 percent. Uh, there was a uh, Coakley lost by a 20 percent margin among uh, voters without college education primarily, you know, blue-collar workers who've been really slammed by the recession. Uh, you know, that same group in Massachusetts in 2008 uh, elected Obama by a 21 percent margin. That's a 41-point net swing, uh, that segment of the electorate. Uh, if that's not a wake-up call and a warning sign to the National Democrats or the ones in Massachusetts still trying to recover from this, uh, I don't know what is. You know, Hal Meyerson, who's a progressive columnist for the Washington Post, you know, the other way, uh, the other day in the Washington Post said the first year of Barack Obama's presidency has been close to an unmitigated disaster for labor. And this is not a guy who's hypercritical of uh, progressive Democrats. Uh, you know, he points out that the unions invested a, a total of $300 million in 2008 electing these folks uh, in the hopes of improving the conditions for our members and the 88 percent of the workforce that's unorganized. And uh, the Democrats don't seem to appreciate the fact that when you alienate your own, a significant part of your own base, uh, there's a price to be paid for it. And there was a price paid in 1994 when the Republicans swept the Democrats out in the House and the, and the Senate uh, in response to Clinton's first two years, uh, you know, which included prioritizing things like NAFTA and GATT. Uh, putting health care reform on the back burner by just appointing a commission to study it. Uh, a lot of folks who had worked hard for Clinton in 92 sat home in 94. And we may be looking at uh, a variation of that pattern of voter behavior uh, this fall. Uh, before we hear from Jennifer and then uh, Pat, I mean, uh, the statistics certainly bear stand out. Uh, 2009 had uh, the lowest level of strike activity in 63 years, uh, only five strikes involving more than 1,000 workers uh, last year. Um, and using that as the definition of a major work stoppage, um, you know, there were an average of uh, 83 uh, strikes of that scale in the 80s, uh, 35 per year in the 90s. We were down to 20 per year uh, between 2000 and 2008, and last year it was five. So that's a trend line that definitely confirms uh, an erosion of what uh, traditionally has been one of labor's most potent weapons. Uh, if a small fraction of the money that had gone into electing Patrick, who's now, you know, if they don't send a helicopter soon from Washington to airlift him out and give him a job in the Obama administration, he could finish fourth, perhaps, uh, this fall if he runs for re-election. I mean, 
uh, totally alienated all parts of the labor movement, uh, very low approval ratings. And uh, let's hope that's not Obama's future. But uh, to the extent One note of follow-up, though Mazen Kamsia is safe at this moment. The Israelis did build a watchtower on top of Ushgrab Hill. More at our website, thestruggle.org. That's our program for today. See you next week at this time. I'm Stanley Heller, and this is The Struggle.